In this video we're going to create pin numbers. So create a new project in Visual Studio. On your form put two text boxes, two labels, a list box, and a button. Name the objects as your teacher instructs you to. However, the names that I'll be using in this tutorial are listed on the screen. Pause the video and create the user interface now. Alright, so we've created our user interface. Now it's time to jump into the code. The first thing we need is a random number generator. I'm going to create it as a global variable at the top to eliminate a problem. We're going to be using a loop in this program. The way a random number generator works is it takes a seed value based on the current system time. Since a loop executes very quickly, this tends to generate the same number over and over. There are other solutions for this problem, but for the sake of simplicity for this video, we're going to just create the random number generator or the random an instance of the random class I should say as a static at the top where we declare a global variable. This will solve our issue. Alright, the first thing we need to deal with is getting the input from the link the text boxes for the length of pin and number of pins. So I'm going to create some variables. Remember, integer has to be converted to because the text boxes are strings. So let's create our temp variables here. So length temp equals txt length dot text and how many temp equals txt how many dot text. Now, I'm zoomed in here, so I'm going to do multiple coding seg statements on one line so I can get the code, hopefully, without having to scroll up and down throughout the video. Remember, unlike Visual Basic and C Sharp, it's perfectly valid to have multiple lines of code on the same line as long as after each code we have our termination character, our semicolon. So to C sharp these are two separate commands. C sharp doesn't care about white space like Visual Basic did. Okay. So again we should use a try catch here but for the sake of simplicity and the length of the video I'm going to skip that and just do direct conversions assuming the user types in the proper data. So int length equals convert to, we're going to convert to integer and this will be length temp and then we have an int how many which will be convert to int 32 how many temp. Okay, so now we have our data how, many, how long we want our pin to be and how many we want to create. So next we need a loop to actually create the pin. So we're going to use a for loop here because we know how many times we're going to run it based on the the length variable. Now you can use a do or a while loop here as well but I'm going to use a for loop because in this case it's simpler. So for i equals zero I, it's not, um, it's not a common semicolon. I is less than length. I plus plus. So we're going to increment. So as long as I is less than length, we're going to increment I by positive one. Okay. Now, we need a method to create our random numbers. So we're going to say private int because we need to return the pin number which is going to be an integer value so private int get rand let's call it get rand and we need to know how long the pin's going to be to make this work because we want to have the user select the length of the pin so we need to know that information so we're going to pass in a parameter called length 
to tell our method that's going to create the random numbers how long the pin should be. All right, so we're going to create a variable called int pin. We'll set it equal to zero for the moment, and we will return pin to eliminate this error message down here. Not all code paths return a value. If the error message doesn't bother you, you can leave it. I tend to not like to have error messages, so I go ahead and create a return to get rid of it. Okay. So eventually, pin is going to equal random.next. Now, if we just did this, we would get a random number eight or nine digits long return to the program. That's not what we want. We want to be we want to control the length. So we need to create some more variables here to control the length. Remember, using integers, we can control the min value and max value. So the min value to the max value minus one will be what the random number could be. So we're going to set min and max here equal to some values. So we're going to set this equal to the minimum, which is going to be Now, POW is a method of the math class that lets us raise a number to a power. If we want a two-digit number, if we take 10 to the length power minus 1, we will get 10, which will be our first two-digit number. Now, it tells us cannot con implicitly convert double to int. The power method as you see on the screen, it might be a little small with the tooltip, but it takes a double. But we've set it equal to we've set it equal to min, which is of type int. So we need to do a conversion, and we convert it the same way we converted the string at the beginning of the application. So convert to int 32. Now, int max. Let's go to a new line here. Now the maximum. is going to be math.pow10 length. So let's take a look here. Using a breakpoint, I can stop the program and then observe some, oops, I left parentheses off. I can observe some values of my variable. So let's try this. So let's start this program. The length of pin is 3, the number of pins is going to be 1. So why does nothing happen here? And of course nothing happens because we haven't ever called the method. Now I did this on purpose. I ran this on purpose like this to show, remember, because we have a different method, we never called it, nothing happens. This is a common programming error for new programmers. They'll have their program all written up, they'll use a method, and they won't call it because when you began everything was done in the button code which means you run it, you click the button, something happens. Here nothing happens because this button calls this code. Well nowhere in that code does it actually generate numbers. So let's actually call the method. So let me quit the program. In the loop here we're going to call the method. So int pin equals get rand and we're going to pass the length variable we created. Now let's try again. Now that we've actually called the method, let's try again. Let's try a three digit number of pins. We'll just say one. Now, as you see here, we get some values. The way you make this appear, and this is not on by default, but I highly recommend it when using breakpoints. If you go to the debug menu, and go to Windows, you will see a um, submenu. Locals is a very useful window. It'll give you the value of all your variables at that point in the program. So we see our min is 100, 
our max is a thousand and the pin generated is 888 now remember this number the max in a random number generator will never actually be used so the maximum value that will actually ever be randomized is 999 which is what we actually want so even though this says a thousand a thousand will never actually be used 999 is the highest one so this pin happened to be 888 so if we continue now we get 876 we can continue again and we can get 347 now notice here I have a logic error don't I I said for I equals 0 I is less than length is that the variable that controls how many we want no it's our how many variable so that's what we call a logic error the program ran properly but it wouldn't have give us it didn't give us the proper output because I said three length of pin three number of pins one generate but I was able to run the program more than once now that I've changed it it stopped after one application let me go back to the way I had it the logic error and show you what I mean so if I type in here length of pin 3 I expect a three digit pin to be generated one time 464 470 347 then it stopped I expect it to run once but it ran three times that's a logic error because I'm using the wrong variable here to control my loop so let's correct that now we only need one more line to make this a complete program and that is we're going to add our pin to our list box now remember a list box like a label text box is of type string so we have to convert our pin to a string to add it to the list box remember to add to a list box is list list box name dot items dot add and then our pin so each time through the loop if we generate a, let's just use four and we'll generate ten and as you see we get one two three four five six seven eight nine ten four digit pin numbers in our list box